Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about the German bishop's new request to have the Pope allow married priests and female deacons. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Secutera in Principio, et Nuc et Semper, et de Seculi Seculorum. Amen. All right, as a whole, I don't like to do political videos here. I do have a couple where I kind of criticize the radical right in uh, another episode where I crit criticize the radical left. But I thought it was important to do an episode on this because it does have to do with the deposit of faith. So if you haven't been keeping up, the German bishops uh, made kind of a, an overture a couple of years ago to Pope Francis asking him to liberalize the church. And one of the things was allow remarried uh, Catholics to receive the Eucharist, even though that contradicts the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 19, and also to bless same-sex unions, and also the two things that we're going to talk about right now. Well, recently, they made a formal petition to Pope Francis to ask the Pope to allow priests to be married and to also retroactively allow any current priest to get married if they want to, and also to allow female ordained deacons with the possibility of maybe having a female priesthood. So I thought we should address this. Okay, so a couple of things. Let's, let's hit the married priest thing. We do have an episode here on 1 Corinthians 7. And 1 Corinthians 7 is one of the scriptural reasons why the church has had the discipline of celibate priests. Now, celibacy in the priesthood is not a dogmatic truth. It's not infallibly revealed or anything like that. It's just a discipline that developed in the church. And typically around by the 1100 AD, um, all the clergy were, were celibate. And 1 Corinthians 7 kind of talks about it. St. Paul talks about some of the benefits as to why we should have celibate clergy. Because when you're married, you're going to have two masters, right? You're, you're tending to your home, but you also have to tend to your flock. And so St. Paul, who also took up the cross, he never married, even though he could have. He was a tent maker by trade. Uh, he was kind of like, let be like me. It's smart to stay single, and so forth. So understand, we could have married pre married priests. Pope Francis could allow married priests. That's not some apostasy or anything like that, because it's a discipline. It's a discipline. So he could allow it, and it's no big deal. There was some talk when he was at the Amazonian sitted, you know, the whole Pachamama scandal that that maybe. He had made some kind of hints because you know how Francis is very kind of vague on everything that maybe he would con he would contemplate allowing Mary Priest and then he backed out a couple of years ago. But we'll see what he does with this. Do I think it's a good idea to have Mary Priest? No, I do not think it's a good idea. But who am I to really? Care? I don't think it's good. I think the way it is now works. Now some would say, well, what about vocations? Vocations would increase. Well, I would recommend, Mick, recommend you read Michael Rose's Goodbye, Good Men. This was a book that came out about 30 years ago. And it really talks about as to why the vocations dried up in certain dioceses. But if you look at the traditional seminaries, they're overflowing. They have tons of vocations, regardless if they're married or they do allow married priests, like in the ordinariate of the chair in St. Peter. If, if you're already married, when you take your vows, uh, you can remain married or whether it be like FSSP or one of these where they don't allow married priests. So it's not necessarily gonna solve the vocational crisis. I think the number one thing that would solve the vocational crisis is go to the four part episode I have on liturgical abuses that drive me crazy. If you go back to a more sacred mass and you go back to the way the church was where we actually represented something and meant something, we were in this world, but not of this world, I think vocations would go back up again, but certainly that's a separate topic. So married priest, not an issue. Okay, so let's talk about female deacons. Now, we had talked about in the episode, and I recommend you watch it, the one on why we can never have female priests. If you look, it seems, and the scholars are kind of deb debate on this, but it seems like we did have a female diaconate. Now, the question is whether or not they were ordained. Now, you look, St. Paul talks about it, I believe it's in 1 Timothy, 
where he talks about how women should never uh, essentially take on leadership roles. And I think First Peter also talks about it too. So we did have female assistants or servers. And you think about, and this is the example I always give, sometimes you need a female helper to the presbyter. For example, let's say you have an adult female convert. And back then we have an episode on sprinkling or immersion, who cares? Let's say they were gonna immerse her. You were, you were gonna have a man disrobe her and put on her baptismal clothes uh, alone uh, to baptize her. So there would be a need for a female in the room, kind of like when, when they now do OBGYN pap smear checks, there's always a female in the room if there's a male doctor. Kind of the same thing. Is there any proof that we had an ordained female diaconate, a permanent one? No, there's no proof from what I know. And again, I could be wrong. But the church has been pretty consistent since the early church. There's a reason why we've never had a permanent female diaconate, because it goes against sacred tradition. And like I talked about in the episode on why we don't have female priests, the priests, well, well let's talk about it in a second. So, so the German bishops are saying that we should have a female ordained diaconate. Now, there's some murmurings that this is really an intermediary stage to eventually allow female priests. So look, if Pope Francis in his wisdom allows married priests, that is not apostasy because that is a, a discipline. You can still support Francis. If he allows an ordained female diaconate, then the radars are gonna go up because never in human history which is 2,000 years, we are the longest running institution of human history. Never in church history have we had an ordained female diaconate. That is questionable, okay? Now they can spin some stuff, but that's questionable. If he ever allows ordained female priests, like in the Anglicans, that is just going against the deposit of faith. And even as recent as John Paul II, he said, we will never have female priests. Okay, this is John Paul post Vatican II saying this. So if Francis, if Francis comes out and says, we're going to have female priests, and I'm not saying he's going to do this, but if he does this, run to the hills, run for your life. It's time. It's time, my friends. And I think you know what I mean at this time. You know, I have that episode, the church left me. I didn't leave the church. At that point, if Francis allows a female, or a diac a diac or a female priesthood, um, He's going against a deposit of faith. He's going against an infallible teaching. That is problematic. Now, a lot of you said he's, you're like, well, Gregory, he's already done this. Come on, he's an anti-pope. Come on, come on. And some of you on the, on the left, the far left, is like, no, he can do no wrong. Allow female, you know, priests. That, that's who cares. We have to bring in a spirit of liberalism and progressiveness into the church. You could argue, and some would argue, that he's, he has has embraced things that yes pre-vatican II church would never embrace like the false ecumenism like salvation outside of the church okay well, whatever either way but a lot i think of what this this pontificate has been has, has been on like vague stuff but he's still been officially checkboxing everything if he comes out and says we're gonna have female priests yeah um the studies were right in other words, I mean, that, that is kind of a, first of all, it's a heretical statement from a baptized Catholic as Francis. That's, that's heresy. He be preaching heresy. And that is apostasy as well. So let's see what happens. I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I want to be on record whenever this comes out in six months or whatever. I don't think he's going to allow it. Now, d does he endorse these things? Does he want married priests, retroactively married priests? Does he want a female permanent diaconate? Does he even want female priests? I don't know. I could speculate, and I think you know where I would speculate on this, but I don't know. So let's just read the tea leaves, and let's just see what official announcements, if any, the Vatican makes on the German bishop request. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know if you agree. Do you think we should have permanent married priests? Do you think we should have female diaconate? Female priests, eventually. I'd love to hear from you. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Share with other people. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.